So congratulations if you just ended up picking up the iPad Pro. This is a great iPad, the new M2 model. It's going to have tons of features built in and I'm sure you're going to love it. So let's go ahead and break down exactly how to use this iPad, basically at a high level. If you've never used an iPad before, you should have a decent understanding by the end of this video, hopefully. And there's a lot to kind of delve into. So first of all, with the outside, we have our 11 inch or 12.9 inch display. So these iPad Pros come in two different variations. Either you get them in the smaller one or the you know, bigger one. In this case, I do have the smaller one. I do prefer the 11 inch size. So it's 11 inches, it's pretty big. And we have a little bit of bezel around this whole entire design. Now we do have a front facing camera as well. So for mine, it is right here. It's pretty much on the same side as the power button. So whichever way you powered it on, it should be on the same button. So that's pretty much where it is. You also have face ID built into the specific iPad as well. Now on the sides of this iPad, on the top, we have our power button right here, which looks beautiful. It does not have touch ID, but you know, you have face ID, so it's still perfectly fine. You have two speakers up here. So you kind of have like the stereo speaker effect on the right side. It's completely flat. There's really nothing else here except for this little microphone hole right there. On the bottom, we do have our Thunderbolt 4 port. So this is USB-C. You also have a little, you know, connector here for some keyboard cases. So what's great about this is that you can actually go ahead and connect other monitors. It is Thunderbolt 4. So whether you know that or not, basically you can connect other Thunderbolt 4 accessories, which I think is really cool. So you have that capability with your iPad Pro. Now on the right side, this is where we have a little bit of an interesting thing. So we have a little magnetic band here where we can actually go ahead and place an Apple Pencil 2, which is really cool. So if you have an Apple Pencil 2, you can place it right here and it'll charge it. But you also have your volume up and volume down buttons on the top right, which is so cool. So you can go and quickly just power, just, you know, toggle onto the phone. You know how to use the volume buttons. On the back, we have a dual camera setup. So again, if you want to go ahead and use that ultra wide camera, you have the capability. You also have a LiDAR sensor too, which is really nice. You have the Apple logo right here little con whatever this certification stuff is and you also have your little you know magsafe and you also have your little keyboard connecting case if you really want to use that so that is pretty much how this ipad holds up on the outside now i already went through the initial setup so if you haven't done that already it's very basic you can just go ahead and just fill in all your personal information and that is basically all you need to do there now you have a few ways to tap you know turning on the ipad you can either, either tap on the display or you can click on the power button that is on the other side so that's totally exactly how to do it now within the lock screen, as you can see, you pretty much, now within the lock screen, this is pretty much where you'll always be presented. So you'll have your little time right here, your date. I'm on do not disturb right, mode right now, but you'll normally see your notifications come up right at this center portion. And you'll also see your wallpaper. So if you ever get any notifications, you'll see them right here. You can also swipe up and you will, you should be able to see some older notifications too. If you are getting emails or whatever invites to certain things, you can swipe up and you'll basically be able to see them right there as well. Now coming into our home screen, you can do that by swiping up. So with our iPad, there's no home button here. We pretty much use gestures. So if you see this bar at the bottom, you can swipe up and it'll take you home. Now, if you set a face ID or passcode lock, it'll prompt you to do that. But the thing to keep in mind is swiping up will always take you home. So wherever you are, if you're in this application, swiping up will always take you home. So kind of just remember that. Now starting off at the top, we have our status bar. So we have our time and date here, just like on our lock screen. If you look on the top right corner, you can see our battery percentage and some other things. Now, just like on other operating systems, swiping down from this, will, you know, basically swiping down from the top left, will take you back into your lock screen. It's not really your lock screen, it's like your notification panel. So that's a really cool thing that we have here. Swiping back up, if we swipe down on the top right though, we will get into our control center. So within our control center, we have tons of different options we can go ahead and modify. So here what we can do is we can go and toggle on airplane mode, we can go and toggle on airdrop, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. You can also hold down on most of these toggles to go ahead and get into more information. And you can pretty much hop out of it by tapping in an empty area. If you're playing any music or songs, that'll show up right there. If you want to turn on auto rotate or screen mirroring, which is kind of locking your screen or casting your screen, you can go ahead and utilize those as well. Now, these two toggles are probably the ones you're going to be using the most. You can go ahead and increase and decrease your brightness with that specific toggle right there. And you can also increase and decrease your sound by going right here. And you can also go like this and kind of increase and do decrease the sound just like that, which is really cool. So you can also turn on do not disturb mode, which I already did. And you have your quick toggles right here that you can modify in settings. And I'll go and show you exactly how to do that in a second. Now hopping out of here, we will come into our home screen. Now our home screen consists of different pages. We also have our dock at the bottom. Now if you swipe all the way to the left, you'll pretty much see all the different widgets that you have available on your specific iPad. And you can bring these onto your home screen as well. And you have, if you scroll through, you'll see you might have different pages. Now at the very end, you'll have your Apple library. Now this is a breakdown of all the different applications you have on your phone. 
So if you basically swipe down and you grab it like this, you'll basically see all the different applications you have on your phone or on your iPad. So basically what you can do is any iPad app that you have may not show up on your home screens, but every iPad you have or every iPad app that you have will show up in this specific panel. So keep that in mind. Now swiping back out, if we come back to our home screens and you're done kind of scrolling through, we can start customizing our home screen. So some basic things to do, if you ever want to remove a widget or if you want to remove an application and or delete it and or hide it, what you can do is hold down on that app and once you get into this little panel, you can go and click remove or you can just click edit home screen. So in this case, let's click edit home screen. Now when we're here, you might see the applications wiggling. This is basically like wiggle mode or joggle mode or they call it. Now if you hold down an app here or a widget, you can move it around. So if you want this widget here, if you want this widget here, you can go and move it around, which is great. Now you can do the same thing with applications too. So the same thing you do with widgets, you can do with apps. Now you can also go through and remove them. So clicking on the minus button here, as you can see it says remove stack, I'll just go ahead and remove it and you'll see everything will basically change. Now, another big thing to keep in mind is that you can do the same thing with applications. So let's say I swipe to the side and let's say I really don't want this photo booth app. Well, what I can do is I can go ahead and click minus and it gives me two options, either remove from home screen or delete app. If I wanna delete this application from my specific iPad, I can go and click delete app and it's going to be removed and I can click delete. But if I wanna hide the application like this one, I can just go and click here. I can click remove from home screen. The app will be gone from here, but it'll still show up in my app library. So if I scroll down, it'll show up here. So that's another thing you can do as well. So that is basically how to use your home screen. It's nothing super complicated and you know most people probably know how to use it by now. Now at the bottom we have our dock. This is a very important little thing that you know you should kind of get used to. So the dock unlike on iPhone, it is persistent within the applications. So if we make our way over to our app store, right? So before we even get super crazy with that, we have to kind of learn gestures. So what gestures do is basically they make it, they bring us home, they bring us away from home, and they bring us basically into multitasking. So I think that's the best way to describe it. I don't even know how I came up with that. So what we can do is just like how I mentioned earlier, if you swipe home, you can basically swipe up and it'll take you back home. You might've seen the dock also pop up as well. But if you wanna swipe between applications that you just opened up, so in this case, let's say I open up the app store and I need to go back into settings, but let's say I wanna go back to the app store. But well, what you can do is you can drag this thing at the bottom and you can go ahead and basically swipe between two different applications or three or however many applications that you had open. So this is another really cool thing. You might, you know, use it. I use it all the time on my iPhone. That's a really cool thing. Now you can also get into your multitasking panel by swiping up and you'll basically come into this panel. Now what you can do here is you can go through and you can pretty much, you know, remove and swipe out of applications like that. You don't have to like all the time, but it's kind of decent practice. If you're no longer using an app, you can just remove it. iPadOS is really good at optimizing, but it's one thing you can do. Now, finally, or not finally, another thing you can do is split screen multitasking. So what you can do is you can grab an application like this and drag it over another app just like that. And you will now have two of those applications side by side. So if we click into it, you'll basically see that we have two of these applications. You can also move these things in the middle, kind of, you know, making it bigger or smaller. So that's another thing you can remove the app by swiping it out. Now the dock plays a toll in this because if you swipe up, you can basically drag one of these applications that are persistent here into the side panel. So unlike, you know, let's say I swiped out of whatever, I can go and grab music and I can go and bring it to the side. And now I have Apple Music on one side and I have this on the other side. But what you can also do is grab another application and let's say you cannot multitask it like this game. But what I can do is I can grab it and I can just, you know, play it over this game. So it looks like that doesn't work. So it looks like that specific portion didn't work. If I try it again, let's see, it doesn't work with every application, so keep that in mind. But you can also grab one of these apps and make it a smaller kind of iPhone lineup, which is nice. So it looks like you can't be doing that with in a split screen multitasking view. So again, we'll just hop out of here. So that is another cool thing. So I would recommend customizing the dock with other applications that you wanna use that you would normally wanna go ahead and split screen or you want quick access to, because that is a really awesome thing I would recommend looking into. Now, finally, that kind of gives you a brief understanding of how to use the basic things within your iPad. If you're not too familiar, I mean, the app store is where you're going to go ahead and download your applications from. If you want to use the camera, you can use camera. You can always swipe down from the top and get into spotlight search, which is basically a quick way of kind of finding things. So let's say I want to download, or let's say I just want to find iMessage. I can just start typing in iMessage, and it'll just give me not only iMessage, most likely, but it'll also give me different prompts, and it should be able to give me, I guess, the application iPadOS still has a lot of work to do, but that's another example. You can search things within Spotlight Search, which is really nice. Now, finally, the Settings application. Let's go and load up this one. This is a massive app with tons of different information. Now, much like Spotlight Search, if you're ever looking for a quick toggle within Settings, you can always click on Search, and you can always search for something. 
So let's say I'm trying to find Bluetooth. I can just start typing in Bluetooth right here if I can't find it. And you can find all sorts of different Bluetooth settings. So if you're looking for anything like AirPod information or whatever, you can search for it here if you're wondering and you can probably find it. Now I'll kind of breeze through these because there's nothing crazy except for like a few different toggles. Up here you have your iCloud settings, you have your Wi-Fi Bluetooth settings here, you have your notification sounds and focus and screen time, but right here under general, this is a very important one. If you go and click on software update, I would recommend every single person who owns an iPad to do this right now, to download and install the latest version of iPadOS. This is going to be crucial. Right now, I think we're on iPadOS 16.0, as you can see wherever it is. So we are on 16.0. I would recommend installing the latest version, which is 16.1. This is going to be the most stable version of software for you as of this point. And you are going to be giving yourself even more issues if you don't install this version of software. So go ahead and install it and you'll be in a way better position than if you didn't install it. So that's number one. If you go through here, you can also see your about, which is cool. You can handle your iPad storage and so many other things too here, which is really nice. Scrolling through here, you don't really have any other options like Apple Pencil, Face ID Battery, and so many other things I'd recommend going through. Under Control Center, if you want to edit up these quick toggles right here, you can go and get into Control Center and toggle them here. So if you want to add screen recording, which is the most popular one, you can add it here. You basically add it right there, and that's basically all you have to do. Now swiping through the rest, there's not really too many other crazy things. Most people probably know these by now, but you can also swipe up to come back home. Now the best way to learn how to use your iPad is basically just by using it. So this is a quick high level breakdown on pretty much the main things you can do or you know the main things on how to use your iPad. If you have any thoughts or questions, you can always check in the comment section and you know leave a comment if you are wondering about something. But you can also, I have a second channel where I talk so many details about so many little smaller things about these iPads. So you can always check that channel out too, but that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out so much.